Hey, what's up, Delicious Faithful? Bruce Moore here to tell you about this week's sponsor, Fight Camp. Fight Camp is a unique workout program that blends body punches, defensive moves, plyometric sprints, and body weight exercises to build unique combinations that are built and led by real-life fighters. You can count on an authentic and demanding experience that will deliver one of the toughest and most well-rounded workouts you'll experience everywhere. If you're like me, and you like your workouts to be a little bit different than the norm or out of the box, the process is simple. Choose a trainer who inspires your inner fighter and puts a smile on your face. And then the carefully curated music stations are guaranteed to help you find the groove that will help you move. You want your fitness program to work out long term, and so do the folks over at Fight Camp. They promise to deliver workouts that keep your body guessing and your mind engaged. So I urge you to head on over to joinfightcamp.com to begin your fitness journey. That's joinfightcamp.com. Tell them we sent you. Hey guys, this is uh, Panagram, and we are on Brutally Delicious. There you go. You got me, right? I got you now. All right. Here we go. How's it going? Good. How are you? Let me make this screen bigger. There you go. I'm hey, doing man. well. Thanks. How's it going? You guys are over in Turkey? We're in Istanbul right now. Wow. What's it like over there? Is it? It's the middle of the night, right? Or late? Uh, it's 11 o'clock. What time? 11. Oh, wow. It's late. Well, thank you for staying up and doing this, and I appreciate it. Where are you, man? I am in Richmond, Virginia. I live in Virginia. Where? Irvington. About hour 20. Is that like by D.C.? Um, no, I'm three hours to D.C. Trying to think where I am about hour 20 to Richmond. It's a, it's a very little town called Irvington. It's very close to Kilmarnock and okay. Montross and all those places. Oh, so out by the bay or the Chesapeake Bay. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Okay. And by the yeah, way, you're east yeah. of me. Nice. Yes, I am. Yeah. I, I come to uh, Richmond. I, what's that um, street? The street where all the um, stuff happens, basically. Broad Street? Cary, is it Cary? Oh, yeah, Cary Street, right. Cary Town, right. Cary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I'm just outside of Richmond. I'm in Mechanicsville. It's another really small town, but... I, you know what? I get my COVID shots in Mechanicsville, man. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's so funny. funny. Yeah, it's hilarious. Very Ooh. small world. Yep, it is. Yeah. So anyway, let's talk about Pentagram. Sure. So uh, this is Tarkan. Tarkan is the bass player. Hi. And nice. he takes Excuse care me. of most of the uh, um, the production and all that kind of stuff as well, and writing and production as well. Okay. And uh, and he's one of the founder, founding members. Sweet. So yeah. I'm going to probably butcher it, but I'm going to try Machina Electrica. Yeah. Close. Good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's been out for like two weeks now, right? So what's the uh, what's been the response to it, and how do you guys feel about it as a band? Are you excited yeah. about it as well? Yeah, we feel great about it. You know, <laughs> it's it's been uh, like almost two years uh, since we start uh, to record this album, and uh, it is good uh, to see that it is finished and it has been shared, and uh, it's been going very well so far. We're starting the shows yeah. this week. Um, and the thing is, the three of the singles were released like uh, in a year prior to the release of the whole album. So it's kind of like, I mean, suppose I think there's like 10 songs in the album. Right. So one third of the album is already out. Um, and we came out with the uh, the new song, the Damn the War song. Mm -hmm. um, that is like the, the release of the album. And um, people like that song. So we're really happy about it. And um the thing is, we didn't really play that song live. And, you know, I think it was the first time that we played it, like, yesterday, you know. Really? <laughs> and, yeah, it felt great, really. And um, and we have a show on, on Saturday, so we're getting ready for that. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty it, – th things are happening quickly. Yeah, the recordings were made during the pandemic, so we didn't have a chance to uh, rehearse in the studio all together as a band. It was like – fragments uh, recorded and came together so right. Uh, right, right now we're practicing the songs again we're learning <laughs> the songs yeah relearning them yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. i want to go back to something you said a minute ago like everybody i mean you a third of the album is released already and that's just because of the weird technology world we live in right yep. so you, you have to live by this new music business model of a single every whatever it is six weeks 
as opposed to the old school way that I'm sure you're used to as well, where you, you know, bought the album on a Tuesday and you sat and listened to it the way you sequenced it and read the lyrics and all that shit, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. How do you, uh, how do you deal with that? And how do you, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we take it as uh, performing arts. You know, what we do is basically on stage. So uh, the, the thing uh, lives on stage. The songs comes alive on stage. So we focus on what we do on uh, during the, these performances. The, the recordings, uh, of course, very important uh, because it's like uh, making a repertoire and uh, and, and announcing it and, make, and making it uh, sh to share it with other people, the songs. But um, the main thing is uh, what happens on the stage. So uh, we don't bother that much about that. And also during all those releases, we just kept on playing. Right. I mean, it never really stopped. So, I mean, it's like, OK, the last album was released, let's say, uh, you know, two or three years ago. So, you know, you, you tour for two years and then stop and wait until the next album comes out or the next single comes out. It wasn't, it was never like that. You know, it, I mean, the band is active nonstop. You know, the, the band probably has like, at least like five shows every month. Right. You know, yeah. So um, like, like Tarkan says, it's mostly about live shows. It's a live band. It's like, you know, yeah. um, uh, but, you know, making an album with nine people, uh, it's already something <laughs> in itself, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, don't, I, I, I don't know anybody who collaborated, you know, nine people collaborating on, on a heavy metal right. album. I mean, Everybody's opinions, right? Yeah, it's like unheard of, you know. Uh, it, it somehow worked out. And um, I, I, it was a lot of fun, too, you know. It, it just, in the end, turned out well. Hopefully you guys, you're saying it's, it's a, a live band, so it's, you know, it's a live thing. But so then are you writing the songs for... How they're gonna come across in the live setting, or are you just writing the songs and then trying to adapt them to the live setting? Does that make sense? Here's what happened um, in 2017. We released this acoustic album. Um, there weren't any new songs in it. All the you know the previous songs were kind of like arranged acoustically, and um, it worked out, and people liked it. And we toured and with all the tours. Then it switched into an electric thing, you know, rather than the acoustic. So all those people who got together all through the years, um, you know, the uh, it was kind of like a reunion. And um, we started playing electric shows, like the real metal shows. Mm -hmm. And that energy translated into this album, basically, because, you know, some people, you know, obviously like three of the guys were the founding members and the rest of the guys were like, you know, in, in periods, they were in the band and out of the band. <laughs> right. So as we were all together, in one show it's like a chronological um, you know kind of like a history of the band from the start to the to the to, you know from mm -hmm. to, to now basically um and that whole thing translated and finally you know um became this album um yeah that's actually what happens if you listen to the album um there are songs and styles of metal um that shows like the first album and the second album and you know the rental um recent ones well let's get bring up a whole nother question then so i've got a couple of i've been jotting down are you guys do you find it difficult not writing the same record because you've got you know a couple record a bunch of records out is it difficult to not like write the same sort of record again does that make sense yes it does yeah yeah i don't know yeah you know we have been playing uh, for about thir 35 years now <laughs> <laughs> but during the years, uh, several uh, band members have changed. Some get in, some get out. And there are always different singers, different guitar players. So each album came out as a different kind of source. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the albums that does not uh, sound like each other very much. But in I... this last album, uh, it, became, it came out like a su summary of these 35 years. So you can hear and uh, tones from every period of this band and also our um professionally we do other things as well like tarkan is a producer on his own on his own and uh, i am a producer and a songwriter and a composer and i also perform on my solo acts and a bunch of other guys do similar stuff right so uh, all through the years people evolve and then when we get together and collaborate obviously we bring all the that knowledge and experience into it and everything changes, you know what I mean? So 
Um, it's not like a predetermined type of thing that we're going to do this now. But as things evolve and they become something new, hopefully. I mean, there are a bunch of stuff that we don't want to put in the album, too. I mean, right. it's not but, like... But all that's very organic, too, right? I mean, it's not like... It's very organic, right? All that stuff, you know, bringing in the, the other influence. It's not anything that's forced at all. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, if it feels forced, we just left it out, basically. It, it right. just doesn't work. And um, I, I think that everything needs to just kind of come together naturally. Uh, it, it, throughout, all, throughout the years, this, this is what we really figured out. I think that's the, the, the core of the whole. So I'm, gonna, I'm jumping all over the place, but I know you said 35 years. Ever imagine you'd still be making relevant music 35 years later? Uh, well, it is not a concern to make something relevant. It is more of uh, we reflect what we are inspired from so. well honestly I, I actually thought i probably would not be on this earth after like 35 or something you know what I mean? <laughs> right i just turned 50 man <laughs> you know, i know shit, you know <laughs> and i'm so i still on stage and doing this and um i mean it, it just makes me happy i guess you know and grateful you know this is i'm not a lot of people have this so i, I really feel you know grateful about all this and I imagine like one of your shows, like a pentagram show is multi-generational, right? Because like you said, we're yeah. in our fifties and we're bringing our kids to the show. So you've got like this built in because metalheads bring their kids to shows. Yes, correct. Yeah, that happens all the time. And the, the, the good thing is we see younger audience throughout the years. So, I mean, it, it kind of, if the music is relevant, like you said, if it's relevant to the younger audience, that, that makes us really happy. Right. I mean, f forget all the returns and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, whatever you're saying, the message conveys, you know what I mean? So it just goes to the younger people, which is very important. I think it's the most important thing. Yeah. You know, rather than, oh, my God, young people are coming. All right, cash in. You know what I mean? That's not what I'm trying to say. Right. Yeah. 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 So you our friends, Sorry. Our friends used to call us for tickets for the shows. And now their children are. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you mentioned message a minute ago is there a message or something you want your fans to walk away from after listening to a pentagram record or more specifically machina electrica well i think there are, there's a general message and also specific messages and i think you can explain that i mean uh, well the songs are about many aspects of life but uh the i think we consider as um, our main problem in this world is the, the rising fascism right now, and uh, we we decided to uh, to make an accent on that when we were sharing the album. We said that we are against, uh, we are with the purpose against fascism. That's the general message, uh, but you know specifically if you take a look at the songs. And analyze them obviously uh, you find uh, different uh, messages from every other uh, aspects of the human experience basically uh, you know the human condition and also the times are weird man you know this album was made during covid just a little yeah <laughs> <laughs> and um so the, the the idea was to get together and make this album but all of a sudden we were like apart and um you know sharing things online and everything got together in the studio. We're in the studio right now in Istanbul. So everything got together in the studio. And Tarkan and uh, our keyboard player Ozan was doing them. Maybe I should say moderation of the whole thing. You know, they they were kind of like getting all all those inputs together and turning them into some coherent piece of work. And um, that's how it had to be. I mean, we 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 did it. I mean, it somehow got together. It, I can't say it was easy. But it took a long time, and uh, but it, it just happened so, you know. Yeah. What was it like getting back on the road after being forced uh, out for a bit? COVID? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what was it like? I got I, fucking bored, man. During COVID, I was in Texas. I used to live in Austin, and I was locked in my house, and you know, we were like, I had a five-year-old kid with my wife, and you know it's not easy. So right, um, I, I just wanted to get on the road. And no, no, I think I think you maybe misunderstood the question. What was it like to finally get back and play like the first live show or get out there 
Were you nervous? Were you excited? Oh, 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 oh. for about yeah, yeah. two days, all the theaters were closed. You know, nothing happened on stage. Everybody was at home. And uh, after that <laughs> period, uh, in the first show, we were a little bit anxious. If, yeah, uh, I imagine. If, because the band is uh, almost everyone is over 50. <laughs> 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 But, you know, it turned out that Uh, performing on stage is also like riding a bike and you get uh, <laughs> into it as soon as you get on the stage so uh, it was pleasing for us to see that we can still do it <laughs> there, there are pictures on Instagram if you see them you're like oh, just going at it really <laughs> <laughs> well I imagine the energy in the place was probably electric right because not only were you excited to be there but all us fans who hadn't been to shows in two years were just excited to be around our metal brethren and listen to loud music Exactly. I think the shows kind of got bigger after the COVID too, you know, because a lot of people were bored, so they would just come out, you know. Right. Like if you know, if if, if you have like 500 people coming out, now you have like 900 or a thousand or you know over thousand. Right. So you know that's that's great. I think I, you know, this kind of music is live, so you got to share the experience at, at that on that moment. You know, it's not like you know nothing is really pre-produced, so. It's all like set up there and all that. Yeah, I mean, there's nine people just playing together and, you know, making music. It's Which just, is crazy, right? Yes, it is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I just lost my train of thought. But um, so what do you guys have planned next? Are you going to be doing more singles or just going to be on the road? Just getting on the road. Yeah, no more records, man, for a while. <laughs> 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 Good enough. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, we're having rehearsals right now. So uh, we just had our second rehearsal. I mean, we're doing this interview right after the rehearsal. Um, we're going to have two more, and then we're going to have a day rest, then we're hitting the road, basically. And um, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, to play new songs, uh, you know, it's, it's a big venue, too, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty big venue. And um, I think it's going to be kind of... Exciting. Uh, exciting. I guess nervous. I get, and too, you know, it's you still get nervous before shows. I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Band, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the beauty of it. I mean, if you think about it. You know. Right. Yeah. And then once it gets rolling and you get that electricity going, it's all like, you yeah, said, after you're the like riding a bike or something. or something, you know, think so. <laughs> 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 then you'll finally figure out, okay, man, I'm here. Let's do right. This, and then man. it's the uh, time to go. Yes. <laughs> I think that's all I had on my list. Did I miss anything you guys want to cover? Uh, anything else? Thank you for interviewing us. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Hey, when you're in Virginia, keep my email address. When you're in Virginia, maybe we can catch up. Yep. I'm coming back at the end of the month. Yeah, but I sometimes miss shows and you know come back for the shows and all that, but they can do without me. I'm going to be, <laughs> be in your neck of the woods uh, December 6th at Machine Head. Oh, yeah. Where? Virginia Beach. Okay. That's very close to me. Yeah, yeah, it's about maybe hour, hour and a half or so. They're, yeah, it's about th what it is for me. They're playing at Elevation 27, I think it's called. Okay, I'll, I'll be there at the on the first of November. So, okay, yeah, yeah I'll see. Well, you got my email and I got yours, so I'll, I'll let sure. you know if I'm moving around right. and catch Great, up for man. a beer or something. Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it. Good luck with your shows and the record. Be well, my friends. Great, great talking to you, man. Cheers. Bye. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you'd cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11.